several years ago, I got to do a seminar at a place uh, outside of London uh, called Arthur Findlay College. This is a school that teaches how to become a medium, you know, people who hold these seances and allegedly contact the dead and so forth. And maybe I should explain that, okay? I'll try not to take too long to do that. Spiritualism is a belief system that started in the 1800s. It started in America. At that time, America was only on the eastern part. And it wasn't in, you know, you know, South Dakota, Wyoming, you know, that all that wasn't existing yet. Okay, so it was just inside of the Mississippi River, basically. And uh, during that time, in the north northeast, Penn, we're talking New York State, Pennsylvania, you know, around those areas, there was this fervor. Actually, it was kind of like um, a fad, you know. It was people were like, uh, you know, trying to come up with a. Uh, the, the latest religion to, you know, explain certain things and to do these healings and and so forth. And this is really where a lot, you know, this this business of you know where uh, traveling preachers, you know, how they come into town and and they usually come with a crew that <clears throat> the crew comes first. You know, they set up some place and. And so they walk around town and so forth. So you get used to seeing these people. So you think that they live in the town, yeah? And so then a little while later, the preacher comes in. They set up a tent, and, and he does these, you know, service church services. Then they usually have really good music bands playing with them and stuff like that. And and then there, there are these Pentecostal kind of people who claim that, you know, they go into these trances and they get the Holy Ghost and, and um you know they shake and allegedly speak in little tongues and it's just a bunch of gobbledygook yeah it, they just make it up on the spot but people believe it and uh it's like a salesman yeah a traveling salesman and then so they'll say okay you know i feel the spirit of god inside of me and and they put their hands in the air shaking and the power of god is in my hands is there and then they'll say, there's a man out there by the name of Herbie. Uh, Herbie has a funny walk, and I'm going to put my hands on Herbie's hips, and and the Spirit of God is going to go into Herbie's hips, and he's going to be able to, to walk like a normal man, and, and so forth. Herbie, where are you? And suddenly this guy named Herbie stands up. I'm here, I'm here. Oh my God, how did he know I was here? You know, And so he runs up on stage, and the preacher puts his hands on Herbie's hips and shakes them, and, you know, like he's, you know, shaking, I don't know, a frying pan of popcorn seeds or something like that. <laughs> shaking a pillow. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, so he does that, and Herbie, 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 all of a sudden can, oh, I feel it, and then he starts talking in tongues too, and and then he starts walking back and forth across the stage. Oh my God, I can walk straight now, and he's running around, and everything, and praise God, hallelujah, and, and then people come up and they all want to be healed too, yeah, and so, and so they plant fakes in the audience and. And then they get people to give them money and so forth, and, and that's how they swindle people. That started around the 1800s, big time, yeah? And so in that part of the United States, this kind of behavior was happening, and people were all trying to – it was like a bunch of music bands competing with each other to be the popular band, yeah? And so only thing it was religions. And so at this time, the Mormon church appeared. You know, this is when the Mormon church uh, came into being. They were also doing, you know, uh, questionable things too. Um, and then um, in just a lot of churches who were doing things. And then then comes this story, this alleged story of these two girls that were, uh, they live out in the country with their family, they're farmers, and for the heck of it, they thought they would knock on the, the wall facing outside just to see what would happen. And then the story goes that somebody knocked back. Yeah, so then they did it in patterns, and then the the uh, rhythmic patterns, and then 
the, whoever was on the other side would knock back the same way. They went out there, nobody's out there. So they said that this was their first contact with the spirit. That's the official story. Um, that's that you know I could say that right now, and some people are going to believe it. Yeah, and because people want to believe in these things. Yeah, there's a reason why. You know, they they uh, they don't they don't there there's something wrong in their lives and. They're, they don't want to face diff, you know things that are bothering them, so they look outside of themselves for something to make them feel better, and that's why they they search for these kind of religions, and so um, that's that's how they they got their audience. See, these people know that there's a lot of people like this, yeah. So they know how to you know scam them out of their money, so they can they can um, you know act, scam them out of their money, yeah. So this is the kind of behavior that was happening, and spiritualism was one of those movements as well. And uh, so it spread, you know, back to England, and it got out of hand in England. And there was a lady there, um, I forget her name, and I, I don't care to remember her name because it's not important to me. But it was, uh, this lady uh, was saying that she was com her communicating with the spirit of Red Cloud. And she would be saying, you know, that uh, Red Cloud is doing a wonderful work for his people and, um, you know, in the afterlife and so forth. And, and uh, <clears throat> in the meantime, he's helping her uh, to help people in England. Uh, so that was, you know, she, would, she was a real good con artist, yeah? And so she tricked a lot of people and they believed her. See, back in those days, it's, it's much easier to trick people than it is today. Because today we have all kinds of technology that can either you can, you can, you know, figure out somebody's a hoax or you can use that technology to fool others. Yeah, so it's, it's, it can go either way. Um, but nevertheless, this lady, you know, she was doing all these so-called trances and seances and and uh you know allegedly red cloud would speak through her and stuff like this and and um and people believed it and uh <clears throat> so this is uh, essentially you know what what was going on and and then so other of these other mediums like this were all trying to they were all in competition with each other yeah so they're all trying to say okay you know while well, you know well you know, I'm 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 talking with the spirit of so and so, and everybody is you know, they always choose well-known people, yeah. And uh, so it it was really um, a, a, a circus, actually, is what it was. And then they um, it got popular because, like I said, people are afraid to face the things that are pro are are troubling them, that are bothering them, and so they look for something outside of themselves to take that feeling away so that's why they look for these kinds of religions and these kinds of nonsense and to try to find hope there to try to find something in these religions to take away these things that are bothering them in their life and so uh, that's how religions grow yeah? because people know that you know, most people who have something bothering them, they're they're not going to face it. They are going to, you know, they're going to deny it. They're going to hide it. Um, and uh, so they, they know that religions can grow fast among those kind of people. So that's what they prey on. Yeah, they, they prey on these people and, and so forth. So in the spiritualist movement back in the early 1900s, uh, or even the 1800s too, um, late 1800s, they they would take pictures of these mediums in, in their seances, and then they develop the pictures. They would say that there's this this ectoplasm coming out of their orifices, you know, like from their nose holes, their nostrils. I mean, <laughs> nose holes, <laughs> nostrils, um, their head handles. I mean, ears. Hey. <laughs> but wherever there's a hole. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of sounds funny. <laughs> Ectoplasm comes out of there. 
but it's supposed to be kind of like, you know, a goo or whatever that solidifies as soon as it comes out. And then that when you look at these uh, ectoplasm, there's supposed to be pictures of people on there who died. And But what's really suspicious is that if you look very closely, they're all poles. Yeah, they are, they're all posing. And they're always in well, well-dressed clothes. So it, this is telling me that this is a forgery. Now, what, what, what is really happening is in early 1900s Photoshop is what's going on. It's, it's fake. Yeah. And so, um, they do this and, um, and they, they, you know, use these pictures to bring in new followers, yeah? new members to their, this religion called spiritualism. And so people will fall for it. They, they have what they think is evidence. And, and and this is what they do. See, this is what these uh, kind of religions do. They they know how to create illusions, and uh, so when they can do this, they this is how they pull in their their uh, followers. Yeah, they're they're like magicians, is what they are. And even it it's, it still happens. Yeah, they're, it still goes on. So um, anyway, um, this. Uh, this movement called spiritualism, um, uh, there was a guy named Arthur Findlay. He's kind of a rich guy. And he was really into this this stuff because a lot of well-to-do people had nothing better to do with their time than to, you know, get involved with these kind of things. And so um, he, he got into this and in his will, he left his estate to the spiritualist church to use as a campus to further the studies of spiritualism and, and teach teach spiritualism as well. And so they call that place Arthur Findlay College. Yeah. And it's a really big estate outside of London. It's in the town called Stansted. And uh so they asked me to do a, a seminar there back in two thousand or 2008 I think it was 2008 I can't remember the year uh, anyway um, so I did that and boy I was confused yeah? I mean like geez these guys are weird you know it's like what what are they doing and and uh, see they have a, a week every summer called Indian week and uh, it's basically where they all show up and and um, they all you know say they you know they want to be they want they all want an Indian Spirit guide Estelle Williams is that her name? I'm getting a message right now in my in my mind. Is it Estelle Williams? I am now channeling the soul of Estelle Williams. Estelle Williams is now here, and she is now saying. Um, those British people are full of shit. That could, I, it was really easy to fool them. Hey. <laughs> That's what they did. Yeah. <laughs> That's how they do this. Yeah. They, they'll just be talking normally, and all of a sudden, okay, wait, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing. You see what I just did here? That's what they do. Yeah. And what I did was nonsense, and that's what they're doing too. It's it's all bullshit, yeah. And um, <laughs> but I really had some people going here too. <laughs> anyway, um, so this is what they do, yeah. And uh, so they have this Indian week, like I was saying, and uh, they want a real Indian there to you know, talk about the reservation, you know, talk a little bit about Indian spirituality. And since I'm here in Berlin and it's just a 45 minute flight or well, actually hour and 15 minute flight from Berlin to London, uh, that, that, that really drives the cost down for them. So they thought, wow, we have an Indian here. We can fly him over and, and he's got long hair and brown skin. So we can, you know, do, you know, that, that would, they used me as a way to attract customers for themselves is what they did. Yeah. And so, uh, when, when I went there, boy, I was confused cause I didn't know what the hell they were doing. They were just, they're all acting weird. And, 
and they all wanted Indian spirit guides and stuff like this and and um some of them you know the other presenters were spiritualists and they would give Indian names to these people they would buy it yeah you would give what was it $25 or $15 or something they would give you an Indian name and they were just silly names yeah like dolphin eye under sky or um uh what's another one that i remember uh something rainbow warrior medicine woman no joke that was a real indian name yeah uh from one of these people rainbow warrior medicine woman that was that's always got four words in it yeah and two nouns which is really ridiculous and uh, cuz it doesn't follow lakota naming protocol for sure yeah so then they would ask me to translate that yeah how in the hell am I supposed to translate dolphin eye under sky? You know what I mean? Dolphin eye under sky. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I just, you know, what did I say? Ho ha, icha, smiling fish. <laughs> they really thought that was the word for dolphin, too, yeah? <laughs> Yes, there are dolphins just flopping around on the prairies of South Dakota. Yeah, that that is part of our vocabulary. Yes, that is true. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyway, um so this is this is you know, they would ask me to translate their names into Lakota and I'm like, God, this is ridiculous. And they were offering money to me to do that and I just said, No, 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 I, I can't do that. That's you know, not my thing. And, uh, you know, you have to, that's just, I just don't do that, sorry. And um, anyway, um, I I was wondering, what you know, how come they don't do that today? Yeah, just uh, going into trances and ectoplasm coming out of the nose. You know, why why don't they do that anymore? And so um, I asked, um, what's her name? Um now I remember her name. Jesus, I couldn't even I couldn't even think of her name. Maureen, yeah, Maureen, that was her name. Maureen Mermaid. Was that was that her name? Maureen Mermaid? Something like that, yeah. I can't remember the full name. Anyway, um uh I asked her that first year, I asked her, Can I watch you guys do that? Yeah, I wanted to know I wanted to see ectoplasm, yeah. I wanted to hold some ectoplasm in my hand, so I was ready, yeah, to uh, psych myself up and everything. And and then she said, "Oh no, 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 we don't do that anymore." And I said, "Why not?" I said, "Well, today we go more on the feeling, yeah. We go more on the vibration." And I'm like, "Yeah, but look at these pictures, yeah, of, of in the early 1900s, and you see these people using." You know, uh, uh, you have ectoplasm coming out of their ears and nose. I want to see that. I said, I want to hold that in my hands. And I also, you know, some, you guys are all saying you have, you know, Indian spirit guides. I want to hear them. And I want to talk to one of them in Lakota. And her face kind of went white, you know, whiter than it already is. And she, she was, she knew I was ready, yeah. And uh, and she really made all kinds of fancy reasons and backed down. And she said, oh, no, we don't do that anymore. And, um, you know, it's, she said that because, you know, people are out to, um, you know, try to uh, um, expose us and stuff. I said, I'm not. I said, I really, I want to hear what an 18th, a 19th century Lakota sounds like. I have, I have no clue. I said, I really want to hear a spirit from back then speak Lakota in the way they spoke Lakota. And I want to see if I can understand it. I said, "Yeah," and and she didn't she she didn't know what to do after that. And so I just said, "Okay," I just let it go. Yeah. So she she good didn't take me. She didn't take up my my um my request. Yeah. So I let it go. Then the second year. Um, I see. I did this a year, the the following year too, and this is where I met Pan, yeah, my my Scottish friend here, and uh, she wanted to hear the things I had to talk about. Uh, she's from Scotland originally, and she lives in London, 
and uh, we got to uh, know each other uh, before that uh, on email and uh, talking about Lakota things and stuff like that. She had a friend who, who went to Shan River and or, or somewhere over there in one of the reservations and was volunteering and stuff like that. And uh, so uh, Pam, I think, found my website or something and was emailing, asking questions. So uh, and she wanted to know if, if I was ever going to do a seminar over there. And I said I was, and, and I, I, I invited her to come check this out. And um, so she did, yeah. So um, that's when I first met her. And, and then the first night, I remember, she said, There's, uh, Pam was uh, not amused. <laughs> I remember that because there was a bunch of crazies going around, yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> Oh my goodness! Anyway, um, so um, she just came to my sessions only yeah, after that because some of the other other presenters were doing really weird things. Like one of them, uh, one of them was uh, they had a medicine wheel and they made a game out of it, yeah, and 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 put you know all these things on the wheel and you had to whatever and and Pam was saying bingo. <laughs> <laughs> and that didn't sit too well with the <laughs> other presenters so <laughs> cuz they they they're white yeah the other presenters are are british people british white people well except for that one lady Jackie she was halfway o halfway okay but the other two are something something else yeah and uh, they started to say things about me, very negative things um, about me uh, to their participants. And uh, I think that didn't sit well with a lot of people, including Pam. Yeah, because I, I, I was contacted later by a couple from Ireland that were there, and they told me the same things that Pam told me of, of how this the guy, one of them was a guy, and how he was saying things about me that he said that's not respectful, you know what he was saying, and um, it was all basically. Uh, I think they were getting jealous because a lot of their participants were getting excited about the fact that I was there, and they were losing um, um, interest um, from those people. I mean, those people were losing interest in them, so to get them back, they would say bad things about me. Yeah, these presenters would say bad things about me. So there was this uh, political nonsense going on in the background. Well, anyway, um, uh, like I said, Pam stayed with me with uh, in, in my seminar sessions, and which was and, and she wasn't the only one. There were others too that wanted to only, you know, hang hang in my sessions, which was totally fine with me. We were the handful in that group that were the only sane ones there, to tell you the truth. Well, anyway, um, one of those evenings, uh, some you know, this is a week-long seminar, and as the seminar, you know, towards the middle of the week, they start letting loose. Um, they start dressing in what they think are Indian clothes. Yeah. So there is this one lady. Um, I'm not gonna say her name. I, I remember her name. Yeah, and I'm not gonna say it. Um, but <laughs> she came out. In the one of the, I'll tell you something. I've seen better dresses on Hollywood Indians. Okay, <laughs> this dress had fringes that were about two inches wide. Yeah, <laughs> you know when you go through a car wash. Yeah, the, and, and remember, there's a part where where you uh, these things spin around like that to to. Uh, kind of brush against your car, you know, like they're supposed to dry, dry it or something like that. That's that's how wide her fringes looked on her dress. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> I, was, I really had a hard time not laughing. I was like, Dude, you can't be serious. This lady was just serious, yeah? And the, the, these fringes were, my goodness, they were the fattest fringes i ever seen. And... <laughs> Pam was sitting beside me. 
she <laughs> she saw this lady and she <laughs> really made the funniest face Pam did, yeah. And she le she leaned over and started to sing this song, yeah, Running Bear. <laughs> Oh man, that's one of the one of the funniest times we ever had, yeah. <laughs> oh, that was so funny that oh my goodness. <laughs> so ever since then we we kind of called this song the Arthur Findlay National Anthem, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, that that was that's one of the funniest moments I ever had in my life, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh gosh, that was that was just hilarious. Oh my the belief system of spiritualism it's contradictory to Lakota belief system. Yeah, in Lakota belief system for one thing it's about um living in peace with yourself. Yeah, you that you have to go within yourself first to find it. And that means you have to face all these things that have bothered you in your life. Any kind of trouble that you've had in your life and it's still bothering you, you have to come to peace with it. That's how you get peace in your life. Yeah? And you take care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. And these four parts are connected to each other. Yeah? And in that, where they are connected is a sacred area. Yeah? So when we go within ourselves and take care of ourselves, and you know we we come to peace with our past we have peace in our lives this helps us to to uh handle difficulties yeah it hel helps us to learn from them make the best out of it and then those emotions leave and they bring more peace and this helps us to enjoy the good times because they will happen that's natural law we get both yeah we get difficulty and we get happy times and, and difficulty brings us peace, but we have to do the work. Yeah, we have to learn from it, make the best of it, and and that's why we don't believe in good versus evil. Yeah, so this is this is the the Lakota belief system. Now, when we live this way, we're communicating from our centers, where the four parts of ourself connect. Yeah, the body, mind, emotional self, and and the soul. Where those connect to each other, that's where that sacred area is. When we live this way, we communicate from there. So our communication has added power from our grandmother Earth, yeah, because that's where we have a connection to her too. So when we talk from there, it goes beyond skin color, it goes beyond culture, and it goes to all people. And, and people who are healthy will be able to pick up on that. Yeah. So this is this is what it's about. It's living in this way. It's a way of life. It's not a religion. Yeah, it's not a spirituality. It's a whole way of life. Now, in Lakota Star Knowledge, it teaches reincarnation that we come here, we learn, we leave, we come here again, we learn, we leave. We, we keep doing this over and over until our development is complete. Yeah, And um, so when you think about that, who are the ancestors? Yeah, Think about that. Who are the ancestors? If we keep coming back, who are the ancestors? I just want to leave that question with you. I'm not going to answer it for you. But in our belief system, we're always in the move. Yeah, This is why we don't have a word for goodbye, because we know we'll see each other again somewhere. That's why we say toksha ake instead of goodbye, which means until next time. In spiritualism, what they believe is that after a person dies, that there's you know there there's this place where where they they can still see the living and allegedly there's all these indian spirits there and they're all men for some reason i don't know why they're all men and this is spirituality okay i mean spiritualism this is their belief okay and and so all these indian spirits are helping the recently deceased to to you know come contact their relatives to say everything is okay don't worry, don't cry, I'm in a better place, blah, 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 yeah? And then, then they go to a spiritual school, okay? So the, when they start getting more spiritually into their spiritual world, they go further away from our reality. So the more they develop in the spiritual realm, the less they can communicate with people who are still alive on this earth. 
That's why they need these Indians, souls, to be the telephone line between the two. That's their belief system. And then eventually they can't communicate anymore because they're in heaven. That they finally made it to heaven. That's their belief system. Okay? So how come these Indian guys don't want to go to heaven? <laughs> how come they're, it's just the guys, yeah? Where, where are the Indian women? You see what I mean? It always has to be Indian guys. And I think this is a, a unhealthy uh, infatuation with the fantasy. Yeah, of having an Indian warrior, whatever, blah blah blah, and uh, and I think that that's kind of basically what it's revolving around. And uh, and the thing is, I always want to meet one who says they have a Lakota spirit guide, because I want to see them go into a trance, and I want to hear them speak Lakota. I have two questions that I can test them. And I will know if this is true or not. Yeah? And I'm not saying what that is. Yeah? But for those of us who are Lakota, you might know what those two questions are. Yeah? Because there's two ways I can tell when if they're fake. Now, all they have to do is fail one. Then I know they're a fake. Yeah? And I, I know how to do this. It's really easy to do. So far, none of these spiritualists have accepted my challenge. Yeah, I'm still I still have that challenge out. So if there's any of you spiritualists who think you you have an in Lakota spirit guide, contact me. I challenge you. I can tell you if you really have one, or if you're a con person. I will tell that to your face that you are a con person. I'm not afraid to do that. Yeah, I I have. There's two two things. Yeah, and it's, if this is really it's really easy, yeah? So I just keep that in mind. <laughs> and I was ready for that, Arthur Findlay, yeah? So anyway, um, that's basically their belief system. Um, even uh, even among themselves, they disagree, yeah? In, spiritual, in spiritualism, even among themselves, they disagree. They argue with each other saying, well, you know, I, I, just over little tiny things. Yeah, and so there are different um, different movements, but I can prove it doesn't work. Yeah, but that's not I'm a, that's not what I'm about though. Okay, I'm not out to to expose frauds or anything. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that these people, a lot of them, are saying they have Lakota spirit guides. I am a Lakota person, and I speak the language. I teach it. I also teach our our spiritual ways too so I know Lakota star knowledge really good and I know what it says about the soul and it says something completely different than what these spiritualists are saying so if these spiritualists are saying they ha they contact Lakota souls I have two questions actually I have more but I th it's only going to take me one question to prove to them their faults because for one thing, I know the spiritualist belief system, and I know where it goes wrong. I know where it, it is dualistic, and I know where it is, uh, what do you call it, um, contradicting itself. I studied this really good, yeah? Because see, if I'm going to know another belief system, and if I'm going to be able to have an intelligent discussion with somebody from that belief system, I have to know what they're thinking. Yeah, I have to know what they're basing their thoughts on. That's why I follow my own advice of check it out. Yeah, take the time to check things out and learn about it from as many sources as you can. Don't just believe the first thing you you discover. You got to check out as many sources as you can. From those sources, you will figure out who's telling the truth. Yeah, and then and then from there you can analyze it. And you, okay, where is it swinging? Is it swinging towards duality or Lakota star knowledge? Yeah, duality is when you only see two perspectives, and you have the tendency tendency to say one is good, and you choose that. 
and go against anything that goes that 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 you disagree with. That's duality. Lakota Star Knowledge says there's at least three perspectives to everything, and there is no good versus evil. Yeah, those are the differences. Spiritualism is dualistic, because it talks about evil spirits. They don't exist. Yeah, that good versus evil is a creation of mankind. Mankind being afraid of things that it cannot control because of low self-esteem, because of inferiority complexes. You see, when they're encountered with a difficulty, they don't handle it in a healthy way. They even deny it. So that's the reason why the emotion gets stuck inside of them. And because of that, they cannot develop emotionally. This is why they have emotional insecurities. This is why they have inferiority complexes. So to to try to pretend or or talk themselves into being in peace, they create a belief system and say, okay, I, there's a trash can, a spiritual trash can for, in this belief system. I just got to put my troubles in there, and it's gone. Now I'm a free man. Hallelujah. I am born again. That's basically what they're doing. They're creating, they're like being little children, you know, creating something that's not even there, and then, you know, saying they're putting their troubles in there, and now it's gone. The only way you're going to get rid of your troubles is to face them, to come to terms with them, because they are actually going to help you. When you do that, they're going to really take you far in your life. So it's, it's as scary as it is, in the end, it's going to really take you far, yeah, in a healthy way. So this is why in Lakota Star Knowledge, there is no such thing as good versus evil. But spiritualism has good versus evil. It's duality. So when I was talking about Arthur Finley College, that's now you know what I'm talking about. And uh, the people that go there, like I said, the, t towards the middle of the week, they all their craziness kicks in even more. They start dressing up in really ridiculous clothes, and and they say this is what their spirit guide looks like, and they, they look like they just walked out of the circus makeup tent. Seriously, I'm not joking. There's some goofy things going on there, and uh, that's to me a really disrespect. Yeah, and uh, they they toy around with sacred items like the pipe and stuff like that, and and uh, they have people coming there to tell them what they want to what they want to hear. I wasn't that way. I told the truth. Therefore, they didn't ask me back. Yeah, because I was saying things that were true, but it wasn't what they wanted to hear. See, false prophets tell people what they want to hear, and I'm not a false guy. <laughs> 